Hello, this is Pranay Sai and our topic for now is Comprehension Passages. How to manage your time while solving the Comprehension Passages? It is important that you manage your time while solving these questions. This can be done by reading the questions first instead of reading the lengthy passage. Then underline the keywords in the question. Then look for the keywords or synonyms of these keywords in the passage. Once you find it, read the entire sentence which is related to the keyword. This is the quickest solution to the questions. Answers will be within the passage. Don't give answers which are irrelevant to the given topic. Understand the author's views. While you solve the questions using keywords, you'll be aware of the theme of the passage. Make sure you understand the author's opinion on the particular subject. If not, if you read the first few lines and the conclusion of the passage, you'll be aware about what the topic is. So this is how you can understand the author's opinion. Practice as much as you can. Focus on the positive and negative words, the comparing, contrasting and conclusion words. This will give you a true picture about what the author is thinking and this will make it easy for you to answer the questions. If you find any sentence or any lines difficult or they are complex which you may not understand at times, hold it on for later. First finish the questions which you have understood through this simple trick. Hope you have understood this topic. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. All the very best. Questions on Comprehension Passages This is one of the most important topics in general English. You'll be given a passage and you'll be asked certain questions on it. Though we are aware of the comprehension passages right from our childhood, we cannot spend more amount of time on reading the passage. But instead, we have to read the questions first, underline the important words, and skim the passage based on the keywords you have underlined. Now let's find out the solution to these questions which are related to passage 1. Like what I said earlier, we have to read the questions first. Before man invented writing, your invented is the key word. And here are the set of options. Literature was passed down by word of mouth. Prayers were considered literature. Literature was just singing and dancing. There was no literature. Among the given options, which is the most relevant option to the question? Let's find out by skimming the passage. If you just skim the first passage and look for the important points, we can observe that the history of literature really began long before man learned to write. So it has started long before man learned to write. How did it start? And what was it before writing? Dancing was the earliest of the arts. Man danced for joy around his primitive campfire after the defeat and slaughter of his enemy. He yelled and shouted as he danced and gradually the yells and shouts became coherent and caught the measure of the dance and thus the first war song was sung. I have read it up to here for your reference. But if you can observe, the answer to the first question is in the first three lines itself. Literature was just singing and dancing. This is the relevant option among all the other options. Here is the next question. As for the war songs and prayers, each generation generation is a keyword. Let's search for this word in the passage and read that complete line so that we'll grasp the meaning and we'll get the answer among the given options. That is how you need to solve the reading comprehension questions. If you can observe and skim the passage, the word generation can be seen here which is our key word in the question. Now what does this line suggest? The songs and prayers became traditional and were repeated from one generation to another, each generation adding something of its own. After the first war song was sung, due to the idea of God, prayers were framed, and the songs and prayers became traditional and were repeated from one generation to another. It means that the prayers were handed down from one generation to another. In this process, each generation added something of its own to the original stock. Yes or no? So the relevant options among the given alternatives is the first one. Added something of its own to the stock. 
as for the war songs and prayers each generation added something of its own to the stock this is the right answer let's solve another question now the first war song was the first war song is a keyword if we search for these words in the passage we'll get the solution here are the set of options was inspired by god developed spontaneously was a song traditionally handed down was composed by leading dancers the first war song was not traditionally handed down after the first war song the idea of god has raised and prayers were framed so even the first option is not relevant now developed spontaneously was composed by leading dancers out of these two options let's find out the correct answer if you observe this line he yelled and shouted as he danced and gradually the yells and shouts became coherent and caught the measure of the dance and thus the first war song was sung it is not evident that the dancers have composed the first song but it is clear that it has developed spontaneously from the yelling and shouting therefore option 2 is the right answer the war song evolved out of from the same line we have read earlier it has been evolved out of yelling and shouting so if you understand the theme of the passage few questions can be answered directly and lastly man invented writing because he wanted now we'll go to the skimming of the passage again if you skim the passage from the beginning if you go here as man slowly grew more civilized he has compelled to invent some method of writing by three urgent necessities there were certain things that it was dangerous to forget and which therefore had to be recorded it was often necessary to communicate with persons who were some distance away therefore among the given options man invented writing because he wanted to record and communicate but not to be artistic not to write a war song and not for writing literature though it seems confusing trying to figure out the answers to the questions by skimming of the passage manages your time but in order to develop this habit you need a lot of practice Let's solve another passage now. Here is the passage and here are the questions. Now let's understand the first question. What seems to be the likely answer of the author to the question posed by him in the first sentence of the passage? The first sentence is considered as the topic sentence for most of the passages. If you understand the topic sentence, then you should be aware about the theme of the passage. about what the topic or passage is actually saying there is no common future for indian children the future is worthwhile for majority of indian children the majority may never enter a proper classroom so let's find out the answer from the first sentence of the passage what is the future which awaits our children the underlying assumption of the question that indian children have a common future is itself dubious the word dubious means doubtful and if you observe the question in the first line it itself suggests some hesitation it is important that you understand the author's opinion according to the author's view the assumption of indian children having a common future is doubtful therefore what could be the option among the given alternatives there is no common future for indian children is the right answer Here is the second one. Which of the following is termed as sharp contrast by the author? Here are the set of options for this question. Let's find out the answer from the passage. If you skim the passage, you can observe the key word sharp contrast in the second paragraph. Now let's understand this sentence. The failure to provide an infrastructure for primary education in the villages of India more than 40 years after independence is in sharp contrast with the sophisticated institutions even after 40 years after independence the infrastructure of primary education in villages of india is in sharp contrast with the sophisticated institutions so what could be the answer among the given alternatives 
lack of infrastructure for rural primary schools. And the last one, the author is trying to highlight which of the following. Here are the set of options. The solution to this question should be clear if you understand the topic sentence. What is the future which awaits our children? The author is showing some hesitation about the future of our children and the entire passage is related to that. Therefore, the best option among all other alternatives is the author is trying to highlight the need to have common future for Indian children. Hope you have understood this lecture. Pay attention to the tips which I have given you. All the very best.